All right, what's up, party people? So welcome back to another edition of Mr. Tate Teaches. Um, so what we're talking about today is catapult math. So the math behind a catapult. What happens whenever a projectile is being launched um, from a, an object such as a catapult, a trebuchet, anything like that? Uh, what is the physics behind it? So um, if you look over here at my diagram right here, we see that we have a couple different things. Uh, what this problem today is going to teach you how to do is to basically figure out all of the different variables that you would need uh, in any kind of physics problem. Um, so what we see here is we have our catapult uh, right here, and it is shooting a projectile all the way a certain distance, okay? Um, so most like what uh, the catapults that we've built in my class so far, uh, anything like that. So uh, what you notice is, is the, the shape of a projectile whenever it is shot from an object, from um, some sort of an object like a catapult, as we see that we get this kind of a curved shape. Okay, in math, this is known as a parabola. Okay, denoted at least in this one uh, by y equals to negative x squared. Okay, what we're going to find out uh, in this uh, case um, is we're going to figure out uh, both the angle at which the projectile was launched as well as the height that it was uh, that it hit the maximum height that it hits uh, as it was flying through the air okay um, kind of the best uh really way of looking at this was um it's football season here i'm a big oklahoma state uh, fan we play iowa state this weekend so i'm really excited to see how that goes uh is from and a football example okay um so our example up here says a punter kicks the ball 50 meters with a hang time of three seconds, meaning that it stays in the air for three seconds. Uh, so we're going to calculate the initial velocity and the height. Okay. So the initial velocity and the height. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to figure out here uh, is we're going to find out how fast the projectile is moving as it leaves the kicker's foot as well as what is the maximum height that it hits as the ball is traveling through the air, okay? So there's a couple things to think about here, right? Whenever I'm thinking about velocity, okay? Whenever something is, a, is moving in 3D, okay? It is moving, or at least a projectile that's being launched, it is moving in two directions. We see that a projectile is moving upwards and it is moving forwards, okay? So we're going to have two separate velocities here. We're going to have a velocity in the y, that's why you see a v sub y here, and a velocity in the x, which is why you see a v sub x here, okay? So we're going to have to calculate two different velocities in order to find our overarching big initial velocity, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and think about this, all right? So let's, let's write down all the stuff that we know so far, okay? So I know that the punter kicked it 50 meters, okay? So I know that from start to finish, this right here is 50 meters, okay? I know that all together, so this is my distance, okay? That's my distance. I also know that it had a hang time of three seconds, so that is our measurement for time in the air, okay? So the time in the air, so T, total time, 3.0 seconds, okay? 3.0 seconds was my overall time, all right? Um, so what I'm gonna do first, uh, we wanna, so I got our steps here. So it says, step one, calculate initial velocity, all right? But I just, I just figured out that velocity is actually in two directions, okay? So I need to calculate two separate things. So these, this actually has um, two separate pieces. Okay, underneath step one, so I need to calculate the initial velocity in the y direction. I need to count, calculate the initial velocity in the x direction. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do y first. Velocity in y. Okay, um, so a couple things to be thinking about uh, with this, okay? Um, is, all right, so these are our equations that we're going to be using here. All right, these are, for, these are equations for projectiles, and I'll move this over just a pinch um, so we can see all of them. 
All right, so this one takes in consideration velocity final. So that's why it says V sub F. Velocity final is equal to velocity initial time plus the acceleration times time. Okay, so velocity final is equal to velocity initial plus acceleration times time. Okay, so this one just solely has to do with acceleration. This one has everything to do with distance. Okay, so measurements. All right, so distance final is equal to the initial distance plus initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Okay, so this one we need distance data in order to use. Okay, uh, this one right here helps us calculate the angle later on. Um, so theta here is going to be our angle of launch. Okay, so that's this value right there. Okay, that is theta. So how wide or how how high was the catapult whenever it launched? Okay, then lastly we have our height equation, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Okay, so let's think about initial velocity in the y direction. Okay, let's think about which one of these two equations we need to use. Okay. Do we know anything about the distances in the y direction? Well, the only distance we know we have in the y direction is our height, and that is something we don't know, okay? So we, since we don't know anything about the height, and we don't know anything about distances in the y direction, okay, we can't really use this equation right here, okay? So what we're gonna do for this first one is we're gonna use this equation right here. So V of F, vinyl velocity equal to initial velocity, times accel plus acceleration times time, all right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this guy out right here. So final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time, okay? So let's try to plug in a couple of things here. All right, so I know whenever an object goes up into the air, okay? So whenever I throw a ball up into the air, it does not just continue to fly up into the atmosphere, okay? At some point, it is going to stop and it is going to come back down. Based upon what? Based upon gravity, okay? Because the fact that a, as soon as an object is thrown up in the air and is in free fall, the one thing that is acting upon it, that force is gravity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? So what, from what I know about that, from that simple concept, I know at some point a projectile is going to and whenever it's moving upwards, remember all we care about is the speed whenever it's moving upwards. At some point, that speed is going to be zero, okay? At that same point is when it, that object hits its maximum height, okay? So I know that this point right here, right here in the middle, this is, I'm going to call this the apex, okay? Uh, in physics, that's how we denote the maximum height, okay? Um, so at this apex here, right here, my final velocity in the y direction, you got it, is going to be zero. Okay, zero meters per second. So imagine that this kicker, it kicks it. Okay, at some point it's flying through the air. It is zooming up there. At some point it is going to stop. Gravity is going to act upon it and it is going to start coming back down to the ground. Okay, so our initial, our, our final velocity in the y direction is going to be zero meters per second, okay? So this value right here is zero, okay? Do we know our initial velocity in the Y? We do not, we do not. Yeah, that's what we're gonna find here in just a second, okay? Um, plus acceleration, okay? So acceleration is going to be how fast that thing is moving as it's coming back down to the ground. Okay, so we know um, that the one force that is acting upon an object as it's, as it's in free fall is gravity. Okay, we also know since it is meters per second squared, we know that gravity is an acceleration. Okay, so our acceleration value here is actually going to be gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so our acceleration value is negative 9.8, so I'll just write all this stuff down real quick. Okay, I don't know my initial velocity in the y direction. I do know that my acceleration is negative 9.8. Now let's think about time here, okay? In perspective 
of this graph right here. Okay, so I know that all together this is 50 meters in terms of distance. All together I know that this is three seconds in terms of time. If I know that this is going, every, every projectile is going to move in a, about a symmetric way, I know that this apex right here, this maximum height, is going to happen at exactly half the distance, okay? So I know that this is going to happen at approximately distance equal to 25 meters. And I know it's going to be approximately 1.5 seconds, okay? So I know that it's going to hit its um, final velocity at 1.5 seconds, okay? So my time here is going to be 1.5, okay? So I've got everything in here. Um, now I just need to solve uh, for negative, uh, for vi of y. Um, so what I've got here, I'm gonna just plug this some stuff in real quick. I get negative 9.8 times 1.5, which is negative 14.7. So I've got EIY minus 14.7 equal to zero. Solving for this, I add this to both sides. And I end up with initial velocity in the y direction of 14.7. So as it is taken off here, okay, I've got an initial velocity in the y direction of 14.7. Initial velocity in the y direction of 14.7. So as it leaves that kicker's foot, it is leaving at a rate of 14.7 meters per second. Don't forget your units. Okay, so that's the velocity in the y direction. Okay, part of the way there. All right, so we got velocity in the x direction. Velocity in the x direction. All right, so let's think about a couple things here. All right, so I know, what do I know about the, the equation so far? I know that we traveled 50 meters. That's a, that's a good distance. I know that it went three seconds in the x direction, okay? Um, so that's really enough information to kind of tell me which equation over here I need to use, okay? So knowing that I know distances now, now I can probably use this equation right here. So distance final is equal to distance initial plus velocity initial times time plus one half a t squared. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and write this guy over here. All right, so I got df equal to initial distance plus velocity initial times time, okay, plus one half a t squared. All right, so you might say, yo, Mr. Tate, this is kind of confusing. This is a very long, kind of scary equation. The good thing about this is, guys, is that we get to go ahead and we get, we're about to get to knock out a good chunk of these variables here, okay? So in this, this example, all right, I'll tell you a couple things, all right? In this example, we're going to say that there is no air resistance. This is perfect kicking conditions. There's no air, there's no wind, anything like that. So there's not going to be anything pulling against um, this ball to make it slow down, speed up, anything like that. Okay, so what that tells me is, okay, as this ball travels from the kicker's foot, it is going to be traveling the same velocity throughout the entire thing, okay? So it's not going to speed up, it's not going to slow down, okay? So let's think about acceleration for a second. I'm in my car, okay? I set the cruise control to 45, okay? I set the cruise control from 40, for 45 for five miles, okay? So that means I'm going 45 miles an hour from this mile to the second mile, to the third mile, to the fourth mile, to the fifth mile, okay? Did I accelerate? Okay, way of thinking about that, did I hit the accelerator to go faster? Did I hit the brakes to go slower? No. So considering I did not go any faster and I did not go any slower, 
that means that my acceleration is going to be zero, okay? So for our example, if there's no air resistance and this ball is going to be traveling at the same velocity throughout the course of the entire kick, what would my acceleration be? Exactly, it would be zero. So my acceleration is going to be zero, okay? If my acceleration is zero here, so I've got one half times zero times t squared. If that acceleration becomes zero, well, shoot, guys, this whole thing is gone. Okay, I don't have to worry about any of that piece anymore. Okay, my distance final, all right, my distance final, that's going to be where the ball ended up. Okay, so how far did the ball actually travel? All right, so I've got from here all the way to here. Okay, I know that it traveled how far? 50 meters. Okay, so I know that this distance final here is 50 meters. Okay, this is equal to 50. Very cool. All right. So my distance initial though, where did it start off at? All right, it started off at zero. Okay, um, so it started off, we're gonna say that it started off at zero. So this, this value right here, going to be zero. Do I know my initial velocity in the X direction? I don't yet. So I'm just gonna say VI, do I know my time? So the time in the X direction, I do. It was three, okay? So, this is my overall equation here, okay? So I've got my distance final, which is 50 meters, equal to my initial distance, which was zero, okay? Because I started out at that point zero, times my initial velocity in the x, don't know that yet, times time, which I know is three, it was in the air for three seconds, plus zero, because acceleration is zero. So we'll kind of clean this up a little bit. 50 equal to the i of x times three. Way to solve for this, divide by three on both sides. Divide by 3.0. And I've got 50 divided by 3.0. I've got, we'll say 16.7 meters per second. Okay, so that is my initial velocity in the x direction. So as soon as I kick the ball, I know that I am moving at a rate of 16.7 meters per second, okay? All right, so I've got my initial velocity in the X, I've got my initial velocity in the Y, all right? So now I need to find initial velocity overall. Cool thing here. Okay, if you look kind of closely at this, okay, I see that I've got initial velocity in the X, I've got initial velocity in the Y, and I'm looking for my initial velocity right here. Okay, what does that look like? That is a triangle, you're exactly right. You did well in geometry class. What, even better, what kind of triangle is it? It is a right triangle, okay? With angle right here of theta, okay? So what we're going to be able to do here uh, is we're going to learn from my, my old boy Pythagoras. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem in order to find, okay, so I know that I've got um, one side, two side. I'm looking for the hypotenuse, okay, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem in order to calculate what my V is, okay? Um, so in other, other words, I've got VIX squared plus VIY squared equal to V squared, okay? which looks a lot like a squared plus b squared equal to c squared, okay? Pretty straightforward. All right, so let's go ahead and just plug in our values here. So I've got 16.7 squared plus 14.7 squared equal to b squared, okay? I'll plug all this into my calculator. All right, I've got 16.7 squared plus 14.7 squared. Okay, I get 494.98. All right, remember though, this is V squared. I need to take the square root, that number, and I get 22.2 meters per second. So my initial velocity right here is equal to 22.2 .2 meters per second. 
So as he is leaving, it's traveling in that direction that he wants it to at 22.2 meters per second. All right. So up next, all right, so I calculate my initial velocity. Now let's find slash calculate the angle. All right. So I'm going to use this equation right up here. Tangent of zero equal to velocity of y divided by the velocity of x. Okay. So basically what I've got right here. All right. So using opposite over adjacent. Okay. I've got those two things. So the only thing that would work, that trig function, is tangent. Okay. So I've got tangent of theta equal to, all right, we'll plug these values in. Um, I've got 14.7 divided by 16.7. All right, but here's the kind of tricky part, all right? So there's nothing that, so I've got to solve for theta right here, okay, which means I've got to divide by tangent, okay? So the easiest way to do this is to do a tangent inverse, okay? So theta is equal to tangent inverse 14.7 divided by 16.7. Okay, so basically what that means is I'm going to go in here to my calculator. I'm going to click on second. Let me find it on here. Tangent. Okay, see this tangent to the negative one. Okay, 14.7 divided by 16.7. Okay, you want to make sure that your calculator is in degrees, not radians. Okay, so theta here is equal to 41 we'll say 0.4 degrees. So he kicked it at an angle of 41.4 degrees, okay? So in physics, the best way to get the highest distance is 45 degrees, okay? So you wanna make sure um, that you're as close. So our kicker here knows physics, at least in some form or fashion, okay? Last equation here, okay, is height, okay? So height is equal to initial velocity squared sine squared of theta divided by two times the absolute value of gravity. So let's just plug all this in real quick. Simple plug and dump, okay? Height is equal to initial velocity squared, 22.2 squared, sine squared of theta, okay, which is 41.4, okay, equal to, two, oh, lights turned off. Two times the absolute value of negative 9.8, okay? So what that means is uh, the absolute value being that we're always going to take the positive value of that number, okay? So um, how would I plug this into the, the calculator? So I'm not say, you know, Mr. Tate, I don't know how to plug in sine squared, okay? The easiest way to do this is we're just going to plug in 22.2 squared. Okay, we're going to click on sine, okay, sine, we're going to type in 41.4, then we're going to square it, okay? So uh, sine theta squared is the exact same thing as sine squared theta. Plug all this in, times, 2 times 9.8, okay, divided by 2 times 9.8, and I get... 10.996 meters. Okay? So, that is how you find initial velocity. That's how you find height uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, good luck on your assignment today, and I hope you do well.